how do you think this applies to tran transgender people? Like, is this in nature? It's in nature in the broad sense that we do it and we are in nature. You know, I don't have a particular, I, I don't want to commit the naturalistic fallacy and think that like there's no, what is in nature is this very narrow range of behaviours that are somehow idealised. But I think I understand, as I understand, it depends what we're talking about, because I do think actually that trans is quite a socially constructed concept. And I get quite annoyed when people say things like, oh, John, Joan of Arc was trans. And like, what, what the hell do you mean by that? But I think insofar as there's always been males and females, and there's, there's undoubtedly always been males that identify psychologically more with females than with males and vice versa, or who feel very androgynous and in a no man's land or no person's land. So that is surely psychologically predictable in almost any kind of family unit or community or society. And, and it seems to be borne out through history. Now, then there's different cultural ways of dealing with that feeling. Like, what do we do with people who feel that way? And what do we do with people whose bodies at the particular time are considered to be atypical for their sex? You know, so that's the ballpark in which I think trans comes out of. The, the modern trans movement's got a particular story about that. Other cultures will have different stories about it. But yes, I think it's a, that impulse to identify strongly with other has always been there. Yeah, and my my general view, which I used to think is completely sane and, and didn't realise was to be contested, was that, yes, and therefore transgender people should be protected under the law. Mm -hmm should have their identity respected and affirmed. If transgender people want to be uh, addressed as the opposite sex, which is obviously quite easy to see, they transparently mm. signal that with their clothing, whatever, then it is an appallingly bad thing to misgender or to insult them and that there should be broad protections against bigotry towards, towards mm. transgender people, as I would say for gay people, as well and that's roughly where i stopped yeah i mean i think i so i absolutely agree with you about the protections legal protections bit and and in the uk something i think that often gets lost in translation transatlantically in the uk we have legal protections for trans people and i have never said we shouldn't and i've always said we should keep them it's we're arguing about proposed reforms to those protections in the direction of self-identification. So we can talk about that later. But I think the only thing I would add there when you say trans people's identity should be affirmed, yes, well, it depends what you mean by affirmed, you see, that's the problem. Because if we think sex is important, and I do, like, as in, it makes a causal difference to huge areas, huge swathes of life, medically, socially, religiously, and so on, then it, there are there's a tension there with affirming someone of the opposite sex in the sex they prefer to be if that means giving them access to the resources and the spaces and of the opposite sex you know there's a tension there and then when you add in male patterns of sexual violence or male sporting performance or things like that things get very murky indeed so affirmation was presented as a cost-free choice and I think many of us used to think it was a cost-free choice but what we didn't realize is that there'd be this political movement to take affirmation as you know in every context you must accept <laughs> that someone's basically changed their sex or act as if they have or that the only way in which you can decide if they've changed their sex is simply by virtue of their own statement that yes. there is no objective or external way in which you could prove or yeah. disprove this fact 